Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Power Women in Insurance podcast. Today, I have a guest that is extremely near and dear to my heart, and um, you have probably seen her on another podcast episode that we've done, um, where we did an episode, uh, maybe, I think it was maybe a year and a half, two years ago, uh, maybe even longer than that, two years ago, it was 2020, anyway, uh, where we had a conversation with both of my children, uh, my son and my daughter, about what it was like to be able to grow up in... <laughs> my home, which is chaos and mayhem in and of itself, but then also the concept of just being able to be raised in an entrepreneurial home. As you know, I have been building the agency now, uh, 19 years, going on 20 years, uh, first part of next year. Uh, and I have my guest today that I am thrilled to be able to introduce to y'all again. It is my daughter, Kaylee Kitchens, and she is on today because she is Wow, wow, the cows are going wild. <laughs> they're 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 clapping, they're applauding because she's officially joined the insurance world. So Kaylee, welcome to the Power of Women in Insurance Podcast again. I'm excited to officially be here as a woman in insurance. Uh, I mean, last time I was obviously a daughter of a woman in insurance, but now it's a little bit of a different situation being one of myself. Absolutely. So I'm excited. Hello, everybody. Making your own mark. I like it. So I wanted to get with you today because you are pretty new into the insurance industry. And what we wanted to talk about today is three or four different pieces. So we may be kind of all over the place. All right. We wanted to come to the listeners out there today and talk to them about number one, the fact that you are coming into the insurance industry from not having been in the insurance industry previously. And then also that you're coming in as my daughter, it's a family type situation. We're very honest about that here. And then also just, just the process that you're going to have over the course of the next year to two years to be able to really get your, your, your fingers and toes into the insurance industry. So we want to start off real quick by asking you what I ask a lot of women who come on the show. Tell me a little bit about your journey and how you have gotten here. Well, um, Obviously grew up with this amazing strong woman that we uh, know and love by the owner of Power Woman and Insurance. Um, so I grew up with the idea of insurance always around me, never had any desire to be a part of it, which by listening to your podcast, I've heard is a lot of similarities <laughs> in women um, <laughs> that have started in the insurance agency. Um, but as life kind of continued on, as I was going through my undergraduate degree, that was 2020, um, I was finishing it up and that's when COVID happened. Um, I was also bartending in, in the service industry at the time. So both of my work outlets via undergraduate degree and making money, both kind of crashed and burned. I was let go from my job and then I was going to school remotely, which at a 4,000 level class era, not exactly the ideal world for somebody that's done in-person classes their entire education. Um, so I kind of rock and rolled with that, tried to roll with the punches, tried to have fun. And I dabbled in the idea of doing networking and doing some marketing for my mother at the time. Um, obviously wasn't fully committed to that. I had this idea that the world was ending <laughs> wasn't too set on it. Um, it was COVID. I never knew it was going to happen. Right. And zombies were around the corner. Right. Um, but as I progressed, I ended up craving a stability for my profession. I wanted to have grounding in it. I didn't want it to be um, very volatile in any way, shape or form. I wanted it to be comfortable. I wanted there to be room for growth. I wanted there to be compassion and power in it. Um, so I ended up leaving the restaurant industry and selling motorcycles for about a year. Super fun, a lot of joy, but again, didn't find that stability in I'm going somewhere. I didn't see myself being able to climb the corporate ladder as well as I might've wanted to. And I didn't feel like my job was very secure in its nature, um, especially living in Colorado, which is where I am. You don't sell motorcycles all around. It snows about three months, four months out of the year. And it's not a very stable. You are buying motorcycles. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, those who are 
regular listeners of the podcast know that um, me and my mother lost uh, my brother and her son um, in September. And that I think changed my mindset on things Mm -hmm. to the point to where that craving for stability increased dramatically. And with that came a desire to strengthen my family bonds because I've been out of the house since I was 16. I've always been a very independent person, always been on my own. Um, if you ask my mother, she'll, she'll always say that I was running away from the minute that I was out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I think that life incidents and that experience mm-hmm. really solidified in my head that I wanted to work with my mom. I wanted to have a stable job that would be protected no matter what were to happen. And I wanted to help people too. I wanted to connect with multiple different types types of people, different communities, different groups, and ensure them that everything's going to be okay. Because that's all that we really want, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think too, I love, I love that you talk about the stability, because um, I love that you talk about being available for people, because I think your childhood, and we did have a whole podcast on this, was a little bit crazy, because I would have a computer going, sometimes I'd pull over on the side of the road to be able to take phone calls, and um, you and Jeffrey always have this joke about, mm-hmm, mm, thanks so much, have a great day, bye-bye, mm-hmm, bye-bye, and kind of my, what, what you guys call my phone voice, right, my customer service voice, so it's just so funny to me, um, in, in October, when you and I were out to lunch, went and got some amazing pizza, and uh, she was like, so I've been thinking about maybe insurance, and I was like, ha ha, not really, right? And you were like, yeah, no, totally, this is like a thing I've been thinking about. And um, I approached it with the idea of I wanted to make sure I did what was best for you. And I know that you are approaching it as well, that you want to make sure that you do what's best for me. And we want to make sure we do what's best for us as a team and as a family. And um, I think a lot of people, when they're when their children come to them and say, hey, I'm thinking about the insurance industry, some people will jump right in and they go, heck yeah. And then other people are like, but wait, you know, there are other things to think about. So what was your mental process? I know we, you're talking about, and I I agree with you, the stability, you've grown up in the insurance community. Um, For people who don't know, my mom actually uh, uh, worked for State Farm as a claim secretary for, um, I think, 26 years. And um, my dad was uh, in a lot of insurance spaces. He sold life insurance, was with Allstate, AAA, kind of changed jobs quite a bit. But he was always in the insurance and financial industry. And um, now to see a third generation come along that we had not necessarily ever envisioned, right? And I think... Uh, my mom would be super proud too, who Kaylee's actually named after. She's named after Kay, my mom, uh, to see that 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 legacy that um, when she passed away, actually the money set us up in our first year of insurance business. And now to be able to see that it's taking care of the fact that my dad is still a part of the business, even as he ages. And then of course, the fact that I've been able to raise you, obviously you are 23 since you've been three years old, almost four. Um, to be able to see you come into the insurance industry is a beautiful thing, but that has to be scary too on your end. I mean, there's a lot of, probably a lot of thoughts in your head. Tell me a little bit about what you have thought through, what your fears and your excitement levels have been specifically on the idea of joining the agency. I think the biggest fear that comes down to is confidence. I mean, coming into the business, especially as a third generation, I feel like there's an expectation, if not an understanding that I will be powerful. I mean, look at you. You have how many people listening to this podcast? You are speakers at conference conferences. You have grown your business so much over the past 20 years, not to mention you didn't even know what you were doing when you were thrown into it. True. You've learned True. everything by yourself. <laughs> and any person that I talk to that knows you is automatically like, oh, that Teresa Kitchens, strong. 
strong. Everybody knows this. Everybody, you're a rock star. Um, and I think that's where the most of my insecurities kind of comes from. Other than that, I think it's the backup of there's so much to learn. Yeah. There's yeah. so much to go through. There's so many processes. It's, and it's not only just digesting the information, it's constantly keeping a pattern of what to do, how to do it. it Cause it is, it's a sales formula. You have to know when things are going in the right direction and know when to back them up and when to leave. And that I think is just going to be a learning curve for me and a learning process that all insurance agents have to go through. Yeah. But that'll be definitely a different curve for myself. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you do have, of course, that, that, that food service industry experience. Uh, one thing you didn't mention earlier is you had a brief jaunt in the idea of selling solar roofing and um, in Colorado, that's really challenging, especially with the way the weather changes. And um, we were talking at one point about how they wanted you knocking on doors until like nine o'clock at night. And um, that was just going to be really difficult and the weather changing and so forth. So then of course you went into motorcycles, you did very well there. But of course, that was your forever home in that space. So I'm excited, though, that when you came to me, we really sat down. And one thing I'm super proud of, Kaylee, is you actually came home for Christmas. And I like sat down for probably about a month and a half. I went, what can I do to make sure this is the very best situation for both of us? So we went to... Um, an office and we sat down and we talked to other insurance people about their journey, what it looked like people coming in, people who had been in the insurance industry about eight to 10 years who came in about mid twenties, about where you are right now and um, who that had been their number one career. And what we also did was that we talked about, and I'm very proud of us, we've done very well so far with this. Um, just so everybody knows, today is May 10th and Kaylee was uh, officially licensed past all of her tests in February. And we decided that we were going to have hats. We are going to have hats to wear, okay, I'm putting on my mom hat. I'm putting on my business owner hat. And there are times when we just have to have a personal conversation that she doesn't need a boss at that moment. But if we just launched into some of those conversations, we might expect some, each other to respond in a certain way that isn't necessarily appropriate for that conversation. So... I am super proud of that. Kaylee, tell me what that did for you in this transition of being able to work with a family member and being able to say, hey, we're going to keep business and personal separate. What did that do for you mentally and emotionally? I think the biggest thing that that added to me was this, this is a job. This isn't family. I mean, it is obviously. And I mean, before everything else, we are going to be family, but when we sit together on mornings, when I tell you about reports, whenever I go through client data with you, you're, you're not my mother at that time. Right. And I think it had to take a mental lap in my head as far as the hats go for me to really understand that. And for me to appreciate the opportunity that I have as you're not just my mom, you're my boss too. And that I think led to a different idea of respect for not only myself, but for you as well, mostly for you and for the business that you've created. Because I mean, I feel a responsibility like any employee does to upholding their end of the stick. If I were just your daughter going through and trying to help you out with the insurance agency, I'd feel willy nilly. I'd feel like I could come in when I wanted, leave when I wanted, so on and so forth. Rather than with the ideas of the hats, I can be like, oh, I'm running late this morning oh crap, I completely forgot. I've got this doctor's appointment or this and that, um, or not forgetting, but keeping up with and letting you know right. on different and your, things. And your schedule. Yeah. Because one of the things that I want to make sure people know is that I'm in Dallas and Kaylee is in Colorado. She's in Denver. So not only because we work with a mainly a virtual agency, we're also working remotely. So sometimes, and this is her first opportunity to really work from home too. So we're, we're really throwing a lot of things into this conversation of transitioning into a virtual work environment, as well as the family situation, brand new industry, family, and, uh, you know, coming into, you know, being able to come into your own self through, through insurance and through a brand new career. So I want to make sure people know that because we're throwing a lot of things into the skillet that we're mixing up into a beautiful 
what I'm gonna call a beautiful uh, breakfast hash. I don't know. With I call it a quiche, you know, it's where like there's a there's a lot of things in there. Yeah, maybe a hash or potatoes. You don't know. Yeah, don't know. yeah. Depends on depends on your, your preferences. Yeah. The whole kitchen sink. Exactly. Exactly. And we are the kitchen. So that works really well. So one of the things too, we talked about the hats having certain roles, but what we also did was we did a culture index on you. And what a lot of insurance agencies are doing is personality profiling, culture index. We said, where would Kaylee fit in our team? I had, I didn't really have an opening for service, but I knew that I, that in time as we grew, that that would be a good space for her. But I also wanted to make sure that we put, as with everybody else, the right butts in the right seats, right? That's one of the things we talk about all the time. So we gave you the culture index and it came back that you have, and I'm super proud of this, a very entrepreneurial spirit, very autonomous. You really love people. You want to be out and about amongst people, but you also are a people pleaser to where you want to be able to make people happy, which is a good profile for sales, but also one that we need to make sure that, you know, people don't over please, right? That people are very honest and truthful and that we also talk about the hard things as well. So with that, we took that and we explored what that would look like for you. And we came across, well, we didn't come across, we already knew it, the um, commercial lines insurance training program for the state auto uh, carrier. So we have been able to create a program to where Kaylee obviously came into the industry in, in November, I'm sorry, February, and we are doing a training process that is service-based for her for a certain amount of time, but yet getting her in the conversation of doing policy reviews, talking to clients and so forth. But then in July, she is going to enter into the state auto training program to be able to go into commercial lines training. So Kaylee, tell us a little bit about what you think about this process of being able to be trained gradually um, and then to be able to be put in an outside training program that, you know, I'm not going to be teaching you everything and it's not necessarily dependent on our team. And yet that's a 12 month training program that they're going to have expectations. You're going to have a separate coach and going into commercial. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts about that. I think it's definitely going to teach me a lot about time management, my own self-dedication, yeah. um, as well as bringing up my confidence. Like we discussed earlier, if I was coming into this blind, I would be scared. But with the teachings and with the help of the state auto program, I know for a fact that I will be confident walking into any door, be able to know the process and the right ways to actually do things and to know the value of what I'm pursuing and what I'm actually doing. Um, I know it's going to be a long, long process and it's going to take a lot of work. I mean, I think briefly it's going to be 50 hours. Yeah. They're saying 50 hours a week is what you should be expecting to be able to put into it. So yeah, that's, that's gotta be a little bit scary though. That's a lot of work. It definitely is a little bit scary, but at the same time, I'm down for the challenge. I want to be challenged on every level, especially if it's going to make my success in the long run that much more profitable. I can sacrifice a year of my time for what, how, how much life lessons am I going to learn yeah. Yeah. through this program? And I mean, really the connections good. that I'll make as well. Yeah. It's really going to set you up to learn to really sell right? It's going to give you the scripts. It's going to give you the, the, the backbone of making calls, building lists, creating a pipeline, all of those things. And yet also give you the ability to go on in and close it and be able to track it and be able to work on those areas where you, maybe you, you are not as strong, right? Which you haven't even figured out what those are yet because you haven't gotten that far into the process. But we all have kind of holes in our in our professional process that then these will help you to be able to to kind of plug and i'm really excited cuz you're the first person we've been able to put through the program and um, i'm excited to see what it's going to do i think it's going to be amazing yeah and you're going to come out with me the first uh, few days in ohio so it's going to be and you're going to i'm going to be able to bounce ideas off of you i know that you're going to be um, teaching me things and a mentor as well as my personal mentor that I'm going to have throughout the program. And 
it's going to be, it's going to be definitely a switch and a change in my previous sales career. Um, obviously motorcycle sales was a whole different type of sales organization because people were coming to me to buy what I had versus now I'm switching to being out there and trying to grab people's attention, trying to sell them on what I have that more than more often than not, they're already going to have. Yeah. Yeah. And the motorcycle industry, nobody, everybody that walked through that door walked in for a purpose because they wanted to look at something because they already had the intention to buy. Now I'm starting over the process to such a point that I have to plant the seed in clients' heads that they don't even have yet. They don't even have the intent to buy. I have to show up constantly and allow the process to just envelop to make the profit and to make the sell itself. Yeah. So it's going to be a completely different um, rotation in what I have in sales so far. Yeah. And maybe even educate them along the way in what they don't have, you know, because you may be able to do an analysis of the paperwork that, you, that they have and say, oh, I notice here you don't have this additional coverage. Um, one of the things I've been really impressed with, though, and I would have been impressed with anybody that has done this, and you've done a really good job with it, is that whenever the opportunity comes up to be able to call a client, to be able to jump in there and learn, um, maybe if somebody doesn't have the immediate moments to be able to teach you a certain carrier, you've really said, hey, just I'm going to jump in there and just poke around. I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to you know, do my best. I'm going to try. And a lot of other people come into the industry and they want to be taught and get the script for every single thing. And as insurance agency owners, we have a lot of that, but there's so much that I have appreciated in you that has so far come on in and just said, no worries, I'll take care of it. And you make a phone call, you get the payment information, or you get an auto ID card out, or you go on it and you poke in on a new carrier and you say, okay, now tell me how to do this because I'm, I've gotten, I figured this out, figured this out, figured this out, but now I can't figure this out. So you get to the point where you try first before you come back and um, wait for someone to come back and answer a lot of questions for you. And I find that to be a really, really great quality in someone that I'm able to bring in, especially sales and especially hopefully for leadership down the road to be able to come on in and help lead our team is that spirit of getting in there and figuring things out. Has that been scary for you? Is that something you've mentally made a choice to do? Or is that something that um, uh, is just naturally the way you do things? <laughs> um, well, I gotta say, I, I love your opinion on it, but I would say otherwise. I feel like Yes, initially I'm like, hey, yes, let's do it. But I do have that initial five seconds, 10 seconds, maybe five minutes of, do I want to do this? Can I do this? What you am fake I it doing? Very well. You fake it very well. I'm very impressed. Hey, fake it until you make it. I mean, <laughs> that's that's a motto, right? Um, but I, I've mentally made the decision throughout my life that if I'm not going to take that first step, I never will. Mm. And that's, I think, something that we can all learn. I mean, the first step is the hardest. We can all be petrified with what's in front of us until we take a closer look and actually see the process that we need to follow. And weirdly, I think since I've grown up with you in the front of the car or right next to me or in the kitchen talking about all of these concepts and all of these um, verbiage and all of the acronyms or whatever it may be, um, I feel like I've always kind of stored it in the back of my head to where I find the confidence through you to go out there, to perform like I, like I can, I want to help you. And if that means getting over my boundary of fear, I'll do it. Absolutely. I will. Well, that's very sweet. I do think too, we have also been a family we used to go out and drive around and go say, let's see what we see, right? Let's, let's try something and, you know, let, let's try something new. And um, I remember, you know, as you were growing up just saying, 
hey, if one thing doesn't work, let's let's find another way to do it, right? And um, yep. I mean, how many times did we make horrible mistakes? I mean, do you remember? I know you remember this because we've mentioned it a couple of times in life, but I don't think we've actually mentioned it out loud. I just got disgusted with the dining room carpet one day. Do you remember this? A living and dining room carpet. We had like a yes. living dining room combination. Yes. I just got disgusted with it one day. And I literally, I don't know if I already had it or I just went to Home Depot and bought like a carpet cutter and I bought like three of them. I'm like, Kaylee, we're just going to start ripping up this carpet. We started just ripping out the carpet and we just, we it took us what, two, three days. I can't remember, like a day or two. I can't remember. Anyway, we just broke it up into sections. We ripped out the carpet, me and my kids, me, you and Jeff. And then we went down to the, the foundation and we ended up that we were going to polish the foundation. We had all these plans for doing everything. We ended up just putting more carpet in but you know <laughs> when we lived that way for a long time for a while but it was it was good it was it was cleaner I really liked it we actually kind of liked it being able to have it down mm-hmm. to the, the foundation like that but it was just such a funny thing I think we we lived a life of taking chances we lived a life of doing something unique and different you guys um would because we had obviously uh concrete floors you guys would like roller skate in the house and um yep. we'd have friends over and dance on the countertops and play in the pool and um you know we lived a life where we tried to do the things that were fun we tried to do things that were outside the box we tried new things right I mean um you were always the kid Kaylee who would take <laughs> who would <laughs> People are going to know uh, way too much about our life, but you would which, take that. Which part are you going to say? I don't know if I'm like prepared. Dealer. I mean, the carrot peeler. <laughs> Kaylee would take this carrot peeler and she would like go to town on my candles and create all sorts of art and there would be wax everywhere. And you'd think had, I'd be a professional artist, but I, I can't even draw a painting. I'm but. <laughs> you have a great sense of style. I love your sense of style. Yeah. But right? We've always taken chances. We've always done something different. And even when we epically failed, like when I drove backwards over my computer that one time and broke the entire computer because I backed up out of the garage and drove over my entire backpack, which had my computer in it. Just what did we do? We just took a deep breath and we said, okay. And we just stopped. And we just said, all right. What's that? What are we going to do? You know, that sucks. What are we going to do about it? Right. I mean, I always say that sucks. What are you going to do about it? Right. And um, I think having that moment, that lifestyle, we've had multiple things in our life where we've just had to pivot on a moment's notice. And I think that that has also helped you to pivot, to learn that you can, that nothing's, nothing's forever. You know, that if we do take off a client, if we do make its mistake, we're going to be okay. Yep. And, I, and I want, I'm hoping that you take that into your journey into insurance. It's not that we can't make mistakes. We definitely can. That's why we have ENO insurance, right? People make mistakes, but <laughs> right. <laughs> I wish we had ENO insurance for life. That would be really cool. But <laughs> I do think I want you to really, truly embrace the fact that that, that you are powerful and that you are amazing and that you are your own person, your own voice, your own pillar of, of, of example to other people. And um, I say that because our intent is that with, this, uh, that with this podcast, we're going to be making three, maybe four of these that over the course of the next year, year and a half, of with Kaylee going through the state auto program with her settling into an insurance space. Uh, You know, we're going to have some of these hard conversations. What is it like to work with your mom, right? What is it like to be brand new in the industry? Maybe what do you encounter out there? What are your challenges? What have you had to overcome? Maybe if you're, if you find yourself in a difficult situation with maybe verbiage with a client on how to be able to deal with the challenge, we want this podcast to be inspirational for other people, as well as resourceful and a tool that they can listen to if they have a family member coming into the industry. We're taking it slow. She is not inheriting a book. Okay. Kaylee is not inheriting clients. Um, she is helping with clients, but she is not automatically inheriting clients. We do have her on a base that I would put anybody that I would hire in. 
I'm not giving her more money as a base salary than I would otherwise. Uh, and she is, uh, you know, pretty much living on the bare minimum of what she can live on right now. In fact, oh, uh, in, in Denver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a conversation last time I was there that her, her, her landlord's raising her rent and she was like, holy crud, oh my gosh. So we're going to embrace it and pivot and grow, right? And now and now that um, I've got a lot of money in my future as far as the ring that's on my finger, that's, uh, that's yes. going to be a that's gonna be a big ticket item uh, yep. within the next few months, next few yeah. years. So, you know, uh, so got to so stay dedicated. So everybody knows well, I bring her into the industry in February and in uh, end of April, 1st of May, it was like a week and a half ago, say first weekend in May, first weekend in May, literally it was like, it was like May 2nd, wasn't it? No, it was the 26th of April. But, oh, 26th yeah. of April. Okay. Okay. So 26th of April, her boyfriend proposed, which we are thrilled and excited about. But I told him, I said, she's got a year in this program. She cannot get distracted in <laughs> planning a wedding. So um, we're going to have fun. We're going to do some wonderful things along the process. But uh, she's already decided it will be. And she decided before that it would be a long engagement. But um, yeah. we're excited about that process as well. So lots of big changes coming our way. So if you are new to the industry, working with family, engaged did you make this transition oh my gosh <laughs> listen to our podcast because we're just going to put it all out there you know I mean yeah. that's just what we're here for we're an open family and we're all about rolling with the punches and uh we're glad to have you guys listening along with us and I'm extremely stoked that I get to be here and to share my story with um especially my mother but with all of you as well um and to learn around around the process and maybe hopefully you guys can get some inspiration or, or a lesson or two from my mistakes or, or my ideas. You never know. You never never know. know. Keep it interesting. We will so, absolutely keep it interesting though. Haley, as we go ahead and wrap up, what is two things that you feel like we have done already that you feel like have been most impactful for this section of your journey? And I'm totally throwing this on you. This wasn't even pre-planned. Mm -hmm. But if you could pick two things that either you would suggest an agency owner do for new team members um whatever that would be I said or on that but I don't really have a number two on that so we're going to go with if you had two things that you would recommend an agency owner who's bringing on a brand new licensed person into the insurance industry what and or somebody who's bringing on their their child as a team member what yeah. are one to two things that you think would have really made the biggest difference for you so far in this transition first thing by far starting off service Starting with the service, I was able to understand the carriers, understand policies, understand um, client information in and of itself, and really get a grips on what it is that I'm doing. Without that basis in service, I would be a blind sheep. Absolutely, I would be. Um, second, I definitely say reading fanatical prospecting. As far as jumping into that sales portion, that was one of the first things that I think you mailed me over the book and then gave me your audible, audible um, log and you're yep. like, read this book. And that's what I did every, every morning, whenever I was walking my dog, I would listen to it. And it honestly was mentally changing as far as you have to be a go-getter in order to do it. It really teaches you about mentality. And I know it's a world renowned book and it's amazingly known, but um, I think that was really beneficial too. Excellent. And what are you reading now? Because I know that we have kind of a list for you as you get ready for the state auto mm -hmm. program. So what are you listening to or reading now? Um, I'm reading the confidence code. Just started it though. So in the first few chapters, but um, I think that's a, that's a very interesting book as well, especially talking about women's confidence compared to men's confidence compared to no matter their IQ, no matter their power, no matter their stance in life, confidence is always something that women find challenging. Yeah. And I'm excited to go through the book and uh, who knows, maybe, maybe I'll uh, develop my own type of confidence and we will be two large pillars running next to each other I love eventually. It. I don't I love have it. a doubt in my mind that that will happen. I don't either. I don't either, my love. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, everybody, this has been another episode of the Power Women in Insurance podcast, where we are talking to Kaylee Kitchens, who is an amazing new member of our insurance world, our insurance passe, if you will. And um, <laughs> we will be hearing from her occasionally throughout the next year to year and a half as she goes throughout her journey and settling into commercial insurance sales. If you would like to be able to reach on out to her, feel free to be able to connect with us through the Sterling Insurance Group. We are in Dallas, actually technically Plano. Um, and our uh, website is sterlinginsnow.com. If you chunk it in a certain way, it looks like Sterling in snow, even though we are a Texas insurance agency, but that is it. So go ahead and look us on up at sterlinginsnow.com. Um, first time I think I've ever actually like talked about my business. Yeah, talked about already. your business stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, we are the Sterling Insurance Group out of Dallas. Uh, we have locations in Dallas, Round Rock outside of Austin, and now we are expanding out to Denver, Colorado. Thank you, Kaylee Kitchens. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate everybody for joining us today. Make sure that you tune in every single Wednesday for another amazing woman in the insurance industry and look for another episode as we go throughout 2022 and 2023, where we talk to Kaylee about her insurance journey. Have a great day. Bye, ladies.